So one of my very good friends asked me, how do you improvise and how do you sort of naturally come to a place where you feel comfortable, I want to say like talking um, the language of music freely and, you know, playing, playing freely through the scales, improvising over chord progression. How do you know what notes fit over what chords and so on and it sort of prompted me to to do a crash course in music theory and uh and improvising and we'll see how long this plays out for but it's just going to be me rambling and playing a bit and we'll see what happens and i want to bring the piano into this because to me i think it's, it's easy to visualize um music theory on a piano due to the layout like on a guitar you can play there we go let me skip to another camera here you can play notes the same note in several positions and that's great for the layout of chords and and so on but because it means you'll you the triads which have tr like chords that have three notes the notes will repeat but Essentially, what happens is that you have, for instance, a an E note here, but the same E note can be found here, here. It does have slightly different, um, slightly different timbre, as you call it. You can sort of hear how, for instance, this is more soft than still the same note. So, on a piano, it's slightly different in that you you have that E note is only here. It's nowhere else. I mean, sure, it's an octave above, but that's essentially what happens on the guitar if you go to the 12th fret. so on but on a piano you only have those notes and it can be visualized it's easy to visualize what's going on there so i kind of wanted to bring the piano into it um and, and let's jump onto the piano and, and i'll set my guitar aside for a second so bring up the piano here put my guitar aside and maybe maybe just get my Stand for my guitar over here so I can more easily reach that. All right, so when we talk about our musical system in, in Western music, we talk about a 12 tone system, and that is essentially all the notes we have to deal with for the most part. Now, um, let me just for a second get rid of that other. There we go. So, if you start from C, go up to the next C, we, um, even though we have 88 keys on the piano, at least on a, a re like, the normal sized piano, we only have the same 12 notes repeating over and over again. And, you know, then it repeats over and over. But usually, you talk about certain scales, you talk about using certain chords and certain keys and scales and so on. Now, for the most part, we talk about seven note scales and start from that point. But those seven note scales essentially come from the 12 notes we have to do with. So I'm not a piano player, by the way, but so you'll have to bear with me on that, but I think it's it's a good it's been a good tool for me to visualize this as well. So if you 
you've probably heard that you know you can play the white keys just uh, don't touch the black keys or you know so on and that means you'd go from C for instance to the C above and if you look at all the white keys here for me it was a good point of reference kind of using C major as my starting point and instead of just thinking of it as white keys to only use the white keys you know you can play basically play anything on the white keys and it's going to sound all right story time a quick story time here i remember telling someone uh, in a in a class once uh, this was not music related but there was a piano and i was just kind of sitting playing you know anything that kind of anything that came to mind and she asked me how, how are you able to do that and i said well you can do it too you know if you go to, to the piano and you know keep it simple don't don't press all the keys at once but maybe you know one or two notes in your left hand and a couple of notes in your right hand so you know it could be anything it could be okay that didn't sound very well fair enough then maybe you start somewhere else you know and she was slowly kind of just pressing a few of the white keys but she got the sensation that you know she too could play something that did not sound completely off and i think that was a great experience for her i don't know if she's still playing anything at all but that was uh that was a complete side story but i mean once you start to look at the white keys i think that was what i was coming from <laughs> but still keep in mind the black keys at least when you're thinking about music theory and, and this is from a theoretical point of view because that's what led me to being able to improvise sort of freely so looking at the c major scale as we call it all the white keys that's in in the key of c that was look at that and still consider the black keys you'll notice that from c to the next note which is d so the scale essentially goes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then it repeats again, C. Let's just repeat that again. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. It's a happy sound. When you look at that, you kind of keep in mind the black keys again you can see how from the c note to the d note if you don't think of the black keys that would be just like one step but if you think of the black keys too you'll notice that from c to d there's a black key in between and in creating scales and talking about scales and talking about keys you essentially talk about um whole steps and half steps so from C to D, step in between, so one note would be a half step, and this would be a whole step, and essentially you could keep going, you know, one and a half, two steps, two and a half, three steps, so on. <clears throat> but we have these seven notes out of the 12 notes, three, four, five, six, seven, and again repeats, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, repeats again. You'll see that from C to D, it's a whole step. The next white key is E, and there's a key in between here as well. So it's a whole step and another whole step. So remember that. But now we come to, to the next white key, but you might notice, okay, that's interesting. There's no, there's no key in between this. It's just, you know, there's nothing in there. And that's what we call a half step. So a half step is to the very next key in line out of the 12. So like a full circle of, of, of cycle of half steps would lead back to C as well. Or B 
be all the half steps played in a row. But to create the scales, we create a series of whole steps and half steps. Whole step, another whole step, a half step. Now there's a black key again in between. So that's a whole step, another black key, another whole step, another black key. So that's another whole step. And then we end up with a half step here again. So essentially, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And you might have seen this in some theory books as um, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Or you might have seen it compromise, like put together in a different way, like uh, W as in uh, whole and H as in um, as in half. So W W half. Sorry, one more time. W W H W W W H, and then it repeats back to to the root. So <clears throat> that's essentially how to build the major scale that a lot of music come from. Now, the problematic part is that on the guitar, as it's laid out a bit differently, we don't have the same sort of visual reference. If you start from the third fret and play up through the C major scale, you have those points here, three, five, seven on the A string, second string. And then on the next string, the D string, the third string. Start on the third fret, the fifth fret, and the seventh fret, and so on. So that's the same shape, two, two of the same shapes repeated. And the next string would be fourth fret. That's a G string, fourth fret. And then uh, fifth fret. <laughs> Same as this. So, but the problem with the guitar is that it's laid out in a bit of a weird way in terms of visualizing the theory and remembering the shapes and all that. Because this same shape that I played here, and which would essentially repeat. It, it, the notes would repeat the same way they do on the piano, but you saw the shapes kind of went differently. Now, we'll talk about this in a second. This is just like an overview thing here. But if you played those notes, you could play the same note as I talked about in the very beginning. You play that up here as well. That's one of the reasons why it can probably be more tricky to visualize and remember on guitar that the C major scale are those notes and so on. It's essentially up here as well. Now, Going back to the piano, though, I think it's worth remembering and kind of keeping in mind, you know, that that is how we build a major scale. Now, let's just try for a second to jump to a different key, try to build the same. Now, this is not something you have to do rigidly and have to focus on. It's just sort of to get into your brain that the scales are all built in the same way. So. Remember, it was whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Now let's just jump into the D bend. Let's go, um, let's go G sharp, G sharp major. And remember that it was whole step at first. Now <clears throat> we skip a key when we go to whole step. So whole step. Next is here. 
Then we skip another key. It was a whole step, whole step, half step, if you remember. So whole step, whole step. Now the next one was a half step. We go here, so that's a half step. The next key in line. And then we had whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, so half step to this. From this note, go whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So essentially that would give us this. And it has a similar flavor. Of course, it's, it's a lower register, but it has a similar flavor to uh, just in a different key. Ah, one more time. <laughs> I'm not used to playing in this key, so it's even it's even testing me. And the interesting thing starts to happen once you move into different chords and uh, parts of the scale now. You probably already think you might already be thinking, okay, so I can start the C major scale from here, I could play all the white keys there. But what happens if I start my scale from a different position? What if I started from G, for instance? Well, we're still playing all the white keys. And if I started from E, Still playing all the white keys. We're still in the overall key center of C major, but essentially what this is is talking about modes and modal playing, at least on the guitar. That's a very common term. It's less common on the piano, but I think it's worth keeping in mind as a guitar player that we talk about modes and modal playing. Um, and you can essentially see how this comes handy when you're talking about building chords from the scale. And these are essentially the chords that I think about when I'm improvising. So if I if there was a C major playing, I'd focus on that those notes from the C major. I'd still be playing the, the C major scale, I'd still be using notes outside um, of that chord. And that's essentially because I know that certain chords are built a certain way. Well, all chords, all triads are built in, in a specific way that I'll talk about in a second. And that's one of the reasons why I think some improvisations can sound a bit more random and some improvisations can sound better than others because if you end up coming back, if you hang out on a note that's not in the chord, then you're not really feeling at rest or at home. So if I played something like a... Like, where's this going? Where does it want to go? Does it want to go anywhere? Just Maybe it just want to sit there. But if I bring it back into a note from the chord, it feels more at home, in a way. So... Sit on that note outside again. I can't end my, well, I can end my phrase, I can do what I want, essentially, but it's, um, it feels like it want to go somewhere. It, it wants to maybe, you know, so how do we build the chords, though? <laughs> uh, well, chords are essentially the triads that we mostly use, especially in pop culture, mainstream music, and any music, really, to be honest. Um, they're built from what we call thirds. And if you look at the C major scale again, you might have noticed that I played the C major here. And you can see that's a C, and that's an E, and that's a G. Let's move the chord up here as well. Now, did you notice that there was a key in between those notes? Q, 
key. I did not play of the white keys. I did not play. I did not play the D, and I did not play the F in this chord and this one chord. And what you talk about when talking about scales is degrees on the scale. So in a C major, you'd have the root a C, have a second, third. That's important. The third. That's going to be an important note. Have a fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, and then you're back to the root again. So, talking about degrees and not notes, root, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and root again. Now, there's a. Uh, the, I've noticed a bit of confusion when we're talking about steps and intervals and chord building and, and so on. So when we talk about chords, I think it's important to remember that you're talking about building from degrees uh, with the root with from the root note of the chord you're playing in. So if this is in, in C major, the chord would be built from you might have already guessed it as I played these notes before. Root, third, and fifth. If I put the C in the bass, you know, it might be easy to hear that that's. Now, the interesting thing here happens when we start to look at the steps um, between the notes, in, in my opinion anyway, because we already, we're already clear in that we had a, a root and a third and a fifth. And we're not talking about extending the chords here with upper extensions. That's that's a different talk. Maybe I'll get to that later on here. But if you count, if you look at the black keys again here, count all the 12 steps we talked about in the very beginning, you'll notice that between these two notes, the C and the E, or the root and the third, we have some half steps here. Now let's count those. C, then one, half step, one, and another one, two, three, four. So from the C to the third of the C major chord, we have four half steps. One, two, three, four. And from the third to the fifth, of the C major chord, you have three half steps. One, two, three. Now, what happens if we move that to a different key? Let's go back to the G sharp we were talking about before. Now, if you're not thinking about this in, in like a music theoretical term, it might be weird to think, how can he, how can he know that that that's uh, like he's playing the black keys. What's the system? And there's, you know, well, the system is essentially the same. A G sharp major chord would have four half steps to get to the third from the root. And then it would have three half steps more to get to the fifth. And we remember that building triads, we're playing the th root, the third, and the fifth. So, that that's how it works in any chords. You could do that with, uh, let's start with uh, E flat. Count up four half steps, one, two, three, four, and then another three to get to, to the fifth, one, two, three. But essentially this becomes probably a bit, you know, tricky and, and eventually it does become natural though. But since we were talking about building scales from seven notes, as in the C major scale, all the white keys. Now, what happens if we, instead of playing C, E, and G, root, third, and fifth, let's move the chord, the shape of playing, um, the root and a third and a fifth. Let's move it up to D instead, but still play all the white keys. Now that had a different flavor, didn't it? More 
more serious in a way. Whereas C, C major was happy. Happy. Sad. Now, why is it sad though? Why is that called sad? Well, what's the building blocks behind it, uh, theoretically speaking? Well, you know, let's look at, at the D note and count up to what is now the third and the fifth of that chord, still playing just the white keys. Well, we go from this note, we skip a note on the white keys and play the next, and then skip a note and play the next one. But you might notice that, hey, there's only, there's only three notes here. One, two, three, three half steps in between. And what about the next note? One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's different than the, the C major that had four half steps and then three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Now in D minor, which is the next chord, we talk about major chords and minor chords, major being happy sounding, minor being sad sounding. Um, you only have three half steps here and four to the next one. So major chords, major triads in the root position, root position meaning you start in the root of the chord. Major chords have four plus three and minor chords have three steps plus four. And that comes again in handy if we move to the same key we were in a second ago with um, G sharp major. Now, you might remember that in C major, the next chord was a D minor. Now, what about in G sharp major? Well, the next chord is a minor chord again, but obviously it starts from a different note. So if we move up to the next one and count three half steps, one, two, three, and then count four, one, two, three, four, we end up with a shape that looks like this. But essentially the building blocks are the same. They haven't changed, it's still three half steps and four, then four half steps. Uh, <laughs> there we go. So, if we move through the, the scale of, of C major, we're talking about chord scales now, we're talking about how if you move that shape, skip in between a note, every note here. You might see that some of them have different um, functionalities, different intervals, and some are major, some are minor, and there's this one that's like a, a diminished chord that we call that. But essentially the building blocks are the same if you only focus on the, the white keys. Root, skip, skip a key, skip another key, and then you end up with that. I don't play like that, obviously, but... <laughs> um, and it's it's the same in any other key. Those are the building blocks. Um, in major, four half steps, plus three half steps to get the triad. And in minor, three half steps, plus four half steps to get to the minor triad. So, if we move through this, C major, D minor, now the next chord is, is okay, that's that's sad sounding too, you know. Let's let's count it. So one, two, three. Oh, okay, we already know now that it's a minor chord because it's got three half steps there. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it's it's definitely a minor chord. Same if we move up. Now that's got four half steps, one, two, three, four and three, so four plus three. Same with the next one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And now here comes the A minor, that's three half steps, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So three plus four is a minor triad. 
Now the next one gets a bit spicy because essentially this is why we call it a diminished chord because it has three half steps, one, two, three, plus another three half steps, one, two, three. So the diminished chord does not have a fifth in the same way that the other chords had a fifth where you had four, three plus four plus three or three plus four kind of think of that as seven steps to the fifth one two three four five six seven seven even in in, in the minor chord one two three four five six seven but in a diminished chord you don't have that seven to the fifth you don't have seven step half steps to get to the fifth you only have Um, you only have six steps and it becomes a flattened fifth and that's essentially why it's called a diminished I think you know um, one two three one two three so the fifth of the chord is diminished if you had counted up seven steps one two three four five six seven you'd get to this note up here but that's a different chord than um, than a diminished chord and those are essentially the chords in in the scale not just in in c major in c major you would think of it as c major d minor e minor f major g major a minor and b diminished now that order of major minor minor major major minor diminished that is the same for any major scale or major key if we started from from the G sharp as we were talking about before, now this is not a key that I'm used to playing in, and it's definitely not a um, a key that I'm familiar with at all, and I'm not a piano player either. But let's try and build it. So started with a major chord. Now the next one was a minor chord. And remember, it was three half steps plus four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Now. The next step of the major scale, we can kind of re-visualize re the major scale as whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So we know the next chord is going to be on C. Now, thinking about how the scales were built in terms of chords, it was major chord, minor chord, minor chord, major chord, major chord, minor chord, and diminished. So major chord minor chord minor chord again major chord and major chord again and then we had a minor chord uh couldn't if i can think now that'd be great why can't i think there we go <laughs> so i'm struggling here too with this minor chord and then we had a diminished chord and um, uh, there we go so the diminished chord being three steps plus three steps and not having that uh, regular fifth up there uh, was there we go <laughs> so all scales all major scales are built the same way it does not matter um, what note you start from, the building blocks and of the intervals, the intervallic relationships are the same. However, the notes will obviously be different, as in C major, you'd have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. If we were in the key of G sharp minor, I feel like I'm getting used to G sharp minor by now, you know, you'd have G sharp, A sharp, C, C sharp, D sharp, F, G, and well, you'd not probably call that F double sharp in this, maybe. Okay, bad key choice. But you, <laughs> you'd usually not have like a, a G and a G sharp. That's gonna cause confusion. It's still the right scale. It's just a different terminology. Um.
So maybe that was not the best key to talk about that in. Um, let's just, <laughs> let's not forget about that. We're still building it from the same blocks, but it's interesting to know how I will kind of get confused here as well. Let's do, let's do E major and kind of think again of the whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. E, whole step, another whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Now, um, as I said, in the key of C, you'd have the note C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C again. In the key of E major, you'd have E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. I have to think about that G sharp major. It's 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 a very uh, it's probably not the um, the most common key to be honest. That was definitely diving into the D band even for me. Because uh, you're talking about F double sharp in that. You're talking about E sharp. Essentially, that becomes something like. Um, now I have to think. It probably dove into the D band too much for me. But so G sharp, A sharp. C, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, and F double sharp. So very tricky. Don't don't go into that. But think of it as the building blocks behind it. That the whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step relationship is the same in, in all major keys. So we're building chords from that. And now those chords have chord tones, as you might have guessed. So if we're sitting on a G note, a G chord, it's going to sound the best. It's going to sound most at rest and at ease when we land back on, on the chord tones. Usually the root sounds the most stable. There's a few birds out in my backyard. But even the third and the fifth sounds all right. Other tones will work too, but they want to move somewhere. So the chord tones are our safe choices, our safe home notes. We want to go on a journey and we want to get back to to the root or the uh, chord tones. So once you start going into chords and how to build chords and extended chords, you might end up thinking, OK, what if I play some more notes? What if I keep stacking these notes up in thirds, keep skipping notes here? Well, you know, if we do it from C, you're gonna you're gonna see, you're gonna end up talking about extended chords. You're gonna have like a C major. Now, if we looked at the uh, degrees of the scale we were talking about before, how that's a root, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, get to the root again. Now let's just try there. And then add the next up. Now, what note is that? We called the seventh a second ago. So that ends up being a C major seventh. Now, if we add like another note up, C major nine, another note up, C major eleven. That's not a chord you'd usually play, but it has a bit of a weird wonky interval between that and between. So you'd usually not be playing that chord too much. <laughs> um, you could add the 13th as well, up here, the A. Now, when it says, like, C major 9, that implies that you are, in fact, both playing the 9 and the 7th. Now, 
you might be thinking, like, how, how did that 9th and 11th and 13th come into play? Well, that is, that is what the extended chords and extended, like, uh, upper uh, voicings or whatever you want to call it, comes into play. So, C, our octave is here. That's a C, then we have the octave here. But once you start going above that, with adding notes beyond just those three, C, E, and G, you know, you could repeat those notes forever, it would still just be a C, C major chord. So we're all C major triad chords. If you start adding the seventh, to so C major seventh, that's still within the range of the octave. Now add the ninth, we go above that C. So add the ninth, it's a lovely sound. The 11th, 13th, and so on. Now, there's no reason to start talking about 10th and 12th and 14th, because what happens is that you will start to see that this was the 9th, and we talked about the F here being the 11th, but if we start talking about a 10th, well, the 10th is just, it's just that E note again. We already have that down here. So we don't we don't say that's a tenth. Well, we talk about it as an interval, but not as part of a chord. You don't you would not see a chord symbol say uh, C major ten because that does not make much sense. The E note is already there. You're not saying C major and that now at a tenth. Um, that's not needed. And um, as we go above the eleventh, thirteenth, it's essentially the same. That would be the tenth. This would be the twelfth. The twelfth is already there as the fifth, so no need to say that either. And um, we don't say fourteenth either because that's uh, that's essentially the same as the seventh. So seventh. So yeah. Uh, but where do we go from here? Um, well, it's interesting just quickly to look at how if we play seventh chords. Like remember, that's just um, it's just another third added up. We stack thirds. This is the first third, and we call this the fifth. But essentially, you can see it's the same interval on the white keys between them. It's another third, another third, another third, and so on. But what happens if we move that through different chords? Now, we remember that this was a D minor chord. We start in D, the chord scale being major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. So our second chord here, our second chord in C major is the um, D minor chord. Now, if we add a, a seventh to that, it's got a slightly different sound to it rather than the C major. So the triad beneath that seventh is obviously a minor compared to the major, but it's also interesting to look at how the seventh relates to the rest of the chord and the intervals and the octave from the D note. We'll notice that there is actually two half steps until we get to the root here. And in the C major 7 chord, there's only one half step. D minor. Now, um, it might be interesting to look at the intervals here as well, just all the half steps and everything. So. Uh, how they correlate to each other. In the C major 7, count it up. Four half steps, another three half steps, and then we count up another four half steps. One, two, three, four, to get to the, se to the seventh or the major seventh. And in D minor, well, count it up three. One, two, three to get to the third, another fourth to get to the fifth. One, two, three, four. 
and only three half steps to get to the seventh here. And this is essentially a minor seventh chord. Overall, in, in, if you take into consideration all of the steps uh, between the uh, all the intervals and steps between the the twelfth notes, you start to think of okay, so that's a second. We talked about that, and this is a third. Now, what happens if I if I lower third? Well, it becomes a flat third, and if I lower a second, it becomes a flat second or a minor second. Um, you could also think of the third instead of a flat third. You could think of it as a minor third. The same with the fifth. Uh, with the fifth would be a flat fifth. You talk about seventh being a major seventh or a minor seventh and so on. Uh, I'll try to remember to post a link about this. If I forget about it, then please remind me. But essentially, it would be rude minor second, major second, um, minor third, major third, perfect fourth it's called, don't worry too much about it, <laughs> uh, flat fifth, fifth, uh, what are we into now? Uh, hang on a second, <laughs> get what's doing. So, Flat sixth, sixth, flat seventh, well, minor sec seventh, major seventh, and seventh. <laughs> um, might have confused a few terminologies there, but essentially, you know, the most important thing is to remember that uh, how the different chords are built. And in major chords, we talk about a major third, notice that here which is a uh, four half steps. And in minor chords, you talk about three half steps, which is a uh, minor third. So if we had the C major chord, now let's try and flatten that third and make it a minor third instead of a major third. Move that third down a half step. We actually get a minor chord, a C minor chord. And you can very much hear how that's different and sad compared to the C major. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I, th I think that's about, you could go on and on about the piano here, but I, I think that's essentially some of, of the theoretical things behind it all that I think are worth mentioning. Um, a few interesting further thoughts is that you can try and look at it and see how well what happens when I add the seventh to different chords. So we had the D minor seventh, we had the E minor seventh, we had the E, uh, the F major, sorry, F major seventh, and kind of notice how it has only half a step up there to the root, the octave of the root. Now, another interesting point here is that once you go to the chord built on the fifth degree of the scale, remember root, second, third, fourth, fifth, the chords built on the fifth degree of the scale are major chords in, in built of the fifth degree of the major scale, are major chords but they have a minor seventh. And you often talk about cadences and, and how chords lead into each other, voice leading, whatever, stuff like that. And uh, you have different kind of cadences. You have plagal cadences. You have, you know, I forget the English name of it now. <laughs> Yeah, so you have an authentic cadence, you have half cadence, plagal cadence, deceptive cadences, and, and so on. Um, like a perfect authentic cadence would be going from that fifth 
back to the road. Now you can voice chords differently, of course, as I said before. Playing any of the notes again does not alter the chords, it just adds in the same notes again. But if you go to that G chord and add the 7th, G major, and add the minor 7th, we start talking about dominant chords, and dominant chords um, want to lead back to the root or the tonic chord, the, 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 um, the, uh, the, the root, the first chord of the C major is also called the tonic, and then the, you think of, of the G major as a dominant chord, dominant function, it, it essentially describes the functionalities of the chords. So, um, C major being uh, being the root. Hang on a second, I just uh, got to make sure I use the right terms here. So, you essentially have tonic chords and sub dominant chords and um you know hang on that's uh, that's not what i looked for this is what i looked for so c major being a tonic chord the third is essentially a tonic chord as well. It maybe not might not feel as completely at rest and at home as a tonic chord, but it has a lot of the same notes. Um, and you can kind of see if you call C major seven the tonic chord. Well, if I let go of that C note, we end up with an E minor chord. So that can be in a you know, it could be used to called a, a tonic chord. And the same goes for the sixth chord, the, the minor chord here, which is an A minor chord. It also shares a lot of notes with the uh, with the C major. And especially if you add in um, the seventh note to the A minor chord might notice if I lift up that A note here, we have these three notes left, which is just the C major. Now, then we talk about subdominant chords, which has a function too. And we talk about a dominant chord, which is usually the fifth, but essentially also the seventh, which was uh, the seventh chord here. We talked about that earlier being B diminished. You can again see how fifth degree here, fifth degree chord, if we add in the seventh to that chord, we talked about that a second ago, uh, G dominant seven, it's a major chord, it's a minor seventh. And if I lift up that G note, end up with that diminished chord. So that has a dominant functionality to it. And the function of this is that the dominant chords want to lead back to one of the root chords. That was too A major, maybe not the best cadence, but... <laughs> uh, hang on, let me try that again, because I'm confusing myself here for a second. So, essentially, <laughs> uh, G7... E dominant seven wants to lead back to um, to C major. Can I hear how that feels at rest? Feels like it's come back around, come back home. All right, so that was a whole lot of talk for the past hour or so about piano and how theory is kind of summed up on the piano a bit now let's let's go to the guitar and let's keep the piano somewhere here like how do i go 
close up. Now, once we start looking at the scales here, you'll still find that they have the same relationship, but we have to keep in mind that notes repeat on different strings, as we talked about in the very beginning. High E. So you don't have the same visualization unless you play it on one string only. So if we played it on one string only, that would essentially be what the piano is. Once again. But on guitar, we don't just play back and forth on, on those strings. As good a visualization tool as that is to bring in all of the guitar, we tend to uh, want to play more like vertical lines. <laughs> So how do we approach this? Well, we still have to think about the whole steps and the half steps and that whole thing. So if you look at, uh, let me just make sure this is, uh, I'm gonna pause it here. I'm gonna upload the second section in a bit. <laughs> 